Hello everyone, my name is Mo. And I'm Camille. And welcome to the Pareto Podcast. You're definitely going to enjoy this episode. Absolutely. Welcome everyone uh, to another episode of the uh, Pareto podcast, more specifically looking at the NHS fundamentals and carrying on with that part of the journey. Um, Today we're going to be uh, discussing a little bit about employment, employment within the NHS, um, including um, how to get employed, what employment looks like, what roles are available for employment and um, what your income might look like and how progression um, you know, might proceed. Um, so we've got a fair bit to cover today. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, but before we do that, on a lighter note, once again, how's it going, Cam? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Feeling good. Uh, busy cracking away at work. Absolutely, absolutely. Seen anything interesting at work or? Yeah, I mean, you know, generally we are quite busy within the gastroenterology department. So, you know, covering liver disease mm. um, also covering things like inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative mm. colitis, Crohn's. We do have a regular patients and also some new faces as well. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, you know, certain conditions that do progress over time, mm-hmm. um, you know, dealt with particularly difficult case in terms of cirrhotic um, liver disease, um, you know, patient unwell infection, and quite confused, which is known as uh, encephalopathy. Um, and just dealing with that, you know, we do tend to get a couple of those, unfortunately, a week to deal with. Um, but, you know, generally quite busy and, you know, quite full on. Um, but it keeps it interesting, definitely. And you just, every day is a learning day, you know. That's good. It's important. Yeah. Like, every, every day is a learning day. Yeah. Definitely same, same, same for us. It's been pretty busy in, yeah. in A&E as it normally is. Um, but lots of unfortunate absences, people getting flus. It's, Temperature's not been not been great. It's been mm. a little bit cold, um, and um, you know people getting unwell, yeah. uh, not feeling very well, and uh, of course you've got the, the the C word that's rising, COVID. Mm. Um, but but not to dangerous levels. Just the fact that there's a bit more absences, so that's affecting uh, workforce and etc. But you live with it, you deal with it. It's the day to day, and uh, it, you know you go to work because it's. Uh, you know you're paid to do it. So on that on that note, <laughs> see how about that? Um, <laughs> let's talk about pay a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, Cam, I'm quite interested to know. I mean, you've you've been working in the NHS for a while. Yeah, around three years. Now. Yeah, about about similar period of time for me, about four or five years. Mm. Um, so we're 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 not quite veterans. <laughs> Far from it. I but, think we're babies in some people's eyes. Uh, yeah, I guess we are. Um, <laughs> but but we'll we'll probably get there one once yeah. one one day perhaps. Yeah. Um, but tell tell us about pay and uh, employment in particular within the NHS. Yeah, so the NHS, as you're well aware, is a very big employer. Um, mm. Over a million people directly employed by the NHS. Wow. Um, and you know that a vast massive percentage of the NHS budget goes in towards you know the pay packets of yes. the people involved within uh, the NHS so it obviously is a very big po- topic both politically you know people are debating whether people are paid correctly people are paid sufficiently for the amount of skills they have um you know and you know it's always a topic of discussion you know pay whether it's the right decision and I think you have to look at it broadly whether it's the right right thing to do for yourself as well I mean in terms of in terms of me you have to match up the skill set your personality type what you want to do with your life what kind of skills what kind of you know attributes you would bring to a role within the NHS so like I was saying there's over a million people employed directly and it's in a wide variety of roles it's not in a simple basic if I would just say doctors and nurses Mm. they are employed by the NHS and they they do get paid by the NHS but it's it's massive, you know. Mm-hmm. If you were to look at patient-facing staff, mm-hmm. as long as the doctors and nurses, you get healthcare assistants, mm-hmm. physician associates, physiotherapists, you know, um, speech and language therapists, um, you know, occupational therapists, um, you know, practice nursing, you know, all these. Uh, there's innumerable roles within the NHS, mm-hmm. and I'm sure there's something to suit everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, in the back house, there's also obviously managers, 
admin staff, you know, making decisions and making, you know, sure the patients are seen in the right, sending out letters, this kind of thing, mm -hmm. organizing consultant based secretaries, you know, dictating and writing out let letters, that kind of thing, as well as other responsibilities. And also in terms of like logistics, you know, security, um, estate staff, you know, higher uh, management as well, human resources, you know, chief exec, that kind of, I mean, it's all about what your skills are, what your experience is, what your qualifications are, and what kind of job you see yourself doing. And I think for everyone, there would be some role within the NHS they would have to fulfill. And, and really, if we were to talk about pay, um, always quite, it's generally an awkward subject within sure. um, British culture, I think. Um, there are certain... Uh, yeah. should, should it really be, though? I, I agree, I agree, actually, because if we were more open um, and, you know, the discussion was more open, then perhaps we'd get more parity yeah. with the, between different colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes these discussions are held and they found out that someone's getting paid much more and someone's paying much less for the same position. So the, the NHS tries to generalise these things and standardise these things. So these kind of situations don't arise. And the way they try to do that across across the board is by having a sort of a formal document, mm -hmm. a sort of a formal, uh, let's call it an agenda because the overall arching thing is called Agenda for Change. Right. AFC, Agenda for Change. Yeah, I remember that, I remember that. It was like a document that was yeah. released, wasn't it? It's a document that I released basically stipulating pay grades right. for different members of staff. So obviously you're aware that different roles get paid different mm -hmm. um, uh, financial remuneration but also it's also in terms of seniority how mm -hmm. long you've been there uh, and also uh, how long you've been in the role as well so mm -hmm. based on these three aspects really pay has changed there is a fourth factor as well actually all right and that's basically um london waiting i don't know okay. if you're familiar with that um we're all aware that obviously living in london or even you know the area surrounding london cost of living is much, much higher. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're being from London yourself, you know, um, but, you know, so those people are compensated a little extra, perhaps not to the degree to reflect that, they might argue, but there is a little bit extra mm -hmm. based on, um, for those colleagues that work within the London, wider London area, okay? So these are the four main stipulations um, that really give you pay, your role, your seniority, level of experience um, working with it and also which area of the country you basically do the job in. Fine and and so but if you're for example um, can, can you give us more a bit more of an illustration so for example what 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 would a, a band two for example be expected okay, to be so on or what's the difference between a band and whether there's progression within a, within a band yeah uh, that that would be a good 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 place to start. Yeah so within so this agenda for change is basically a model mainly for secondary care to abide by. Primary care is sort of funded slightly differently, right. um, but they tend generally to, to reflect the equivalent banding, so mm -hmm. within Harris. So when we talk about bands, agenda for change is split into eight bands. Right. Um, let me rephrase that. Agenda for change is split into nine bands. Fine. However, band one no longer applies. Okay. So Fine. band two is the lowest band. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So there's band two, three, four, five, and all the way up to band nine. Mm -hmm. So band two would perhaps be you know the lower end of the scale, mm -hmm. and band nine is the highest level of the scale. So that, so band two we'd find colleagues such as healthcare assistants, you know, um, play staff. Mm -hmm. These kind of roles are defined as within band two. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at band two equivalent salary we probably bring around for a full time employee with um you know newly quali uh, newly within the role would be around twenty thousand pounds. I mean if you want specifics for these pricings you can always go to uh, agenda for change on the NHS website and that would give you all the bandings with the specific numbers in terms of exactly what you would get paid. We're just talking in a broad sense. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll put a link on the um, in the description so hopefully you have access to that. Yeah, so we're back to the discussion. So band two would probably be paid around twenty thousand pounds. That's for a newly qualified um not newly qualified, sorry. So for example a band two um healthcare system would probably be paid around twenty thousand, which is mm -hmm. the entry point to band two. Okay. Now as they develop their experience as they work more longer hours mm -hmm. um, more longer years within that role they subsequently as their experience goes on mm -hmm. they get paid increasingly amounts so 
So after two years, there's a little bit of a salary bump, and after five years, there is as well. Okay. Right. And then, so for example, to go from a very typical example would be a newly qualified nurse, if we were to go to that, they would be qualified. They would be paid around something called band five. So band two, band two three, four, band five, okay? Now band five would be around 27,000 mm pounds. -hmm. That's the, you know, for a newly qualified nurse, the first NHS uh, job would be paid around that. And that's around 27,000 pounds at, at the moment of recording, okay? And, you know, if you, you know, you're talking about, you know, increasing now, is there any way to grow? So yeah, there's a couple of ways really. So with experience, you get paid more. So, you know, after two years experience, after five years experience, there's a little bit of a, a pay jump as well. So, you know, as you become more efficient in your role, you know what you're doing a little bit more. Hopefully you're, you're expecting that to happen. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the aim, isn't it? That's the aim. So just to keep the staff there, retain staff, is that incentive, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to progress in your career that way and getting paid slightly more as you stay in there. And also if you get, if you go for a, a, a promotion, for example, say for example, from a just um, qualified nurse, you are becoming sister on the mm -hmm. ward, for example, you know, that's the, you know, the head nurse for the shift on charge that day. You'll be pan, paid band six level, which is uh, over 32,000 pounds mm -hmm. around that level anyway. So that would be another way of, you know, increasing your, your pay, um, you know, in terms of getting, on to band six okay so obviously if we would go to the other end of the scale if you were to band nine that would be like you know head of departments for example head of hr head of estates you know chief nurse mm. would be quite equivalent to you know band nine level so that'd be the highest end of the level and that'd be like i think it's eighty thousand plus mm. um you know at that sort of level so that's like very, very the high paid staff certain senior managers chief executives that kind of thing are not within the nhs agenda for change. Mm -hmm. So they're paid separate through by a separate system. Oh, okay. And if you were to go to specific <coughs> um, NHS doctors mm -hmm. and NHS dentists are paid by their own scheme as well. So they've got oh. a slightly different um, compensation mm -hmm. scheme. But if you were to, uh, sorry, you were going to say something. No, and I assume like um, out of hours enhancements, etc., are separate to this. I think they're in yeah. addition to the the basic banding that someone can expect. Yeah, I mean, this um, when we talk about this banding agenda for change, this is for a typical 37 and a half week in hours contract. Fine. So uh, the NHS, like many organisations, pays extra percentage for out of hours work. Obviously, the NHS is a 24 hour service. There are some roles that need to be there 24 hours a day. Yeah. Very typical one is nurses, <coughs> for example. Mm -hmm. So nursing staff, there's always needs to be nursing. So there's minimum safe le levels stipulated by law okay, to yes. run a ward, okay? So for that out of hours work that nurse would do, for example, is a weekend, bank holiday, you know, public holiday, night shift, mm. um, they do get paid extra for those. Fine. Okay. Mm. Fine. And if, if, for example, somebody was to, because um, a, a lot of staff, nursing staff, or even from some of my my colleagues, mm. as well as working their, their NHS day jobs, they also, you know, do some bank work, yeah. they also do some local, etc. Th things like that won't affect your, your banding, they're, they're separate, isn't that right? Yeah, so I mean, bank work, I mean, there's normally like, a, you know, if you, for example, you wanted to pick up an extra shift, you mm. want to do a few more hours, you know, to pump up your pay and everything, yeah. that's definitely impossible and <clears throat> that would be within your, outside your band, you'd be paid an hourly rate for that. Fine, okay. So that would be outside your band really, but that hourly rate would be sort of linked to your band. So each band has a different hourly rate. Right, okay, uh, fine. And that would be different depending on what kind of shift you're doing. Fine. Night shift, weekend shift, day shift. Fair enough. And, and so from what I'm understanding as well, Cam, is that if you wanted to progress in your banking, mm. I mean, sorry, your banding, mm. so go to a higher band, mm. that's not necessarily dependent on length of service. That's more dependent on skill set. Yeah, you know, so, you, you, if you're if you if you're taking up a responsibility that yeah. you know that is of a higher skill set, yeah. or of greater responsibility, or requiring expertise, yeah. whether that be theoretical, experiential, yeah. um, you know, it's more develop, it's more based on that as opposed to just being in service for ten years. Yeah, I mean, a good way of to gain up money is to gain some extra qualification. Fine. Um. So, what happens uh, you see quite regularly, you know, healthcare system. They like working within the NHS and they want to 
you know, increase their pay, do it slightly different role within the NHS. Mm. They upskill, they get a nursing qualification. Yes. So that's a degree, obviously, um, and then once they have that qualification, then they can go for a band five position. Uh, and that's another way to increase it. Um, but they're like you were saying, you know, if you're getting other responsibilities of that leadership, mm. you know, that kind of management roles, you know, if you're doing extra responsibilities, you're working, you know, in a tough, um, you know, environment, mm. there's certain extra pay, pay that's associated with that. Mm. Uh, whether it's also last minute as well. So um, unfortunately, sometimes that you took levels of staffing, last minute sickness, that kind of thing. Of course. There can be last minute sort of requests for work, mm. for extra staff and that, you know, because of the urgency of the work, there'd mm. be a premium attached to that. So you'd get paid, paid a little bit more if you came in on sort of a last minute notice, if that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense, it makes perfect sense. Um, it's quite interesting because of course, you know, not everyone's, a, you know, subject to the banding. So this is all, all new information to me, to be honest. Yeah. But I think it's vital for anyone to know if they're considering working in the NHS, what to expect. Mm. Um, you know, you mentioned the agenda for change and you mentioned kind of like, you know, an indicative link or table that they give. Yeah. Um, and hopefully our viewers can, can view that and that will give them a, a greater idea about what they can expect at the end of the month. Yeah, I mean, yes, that would be true. But please note, obviously, there are reductions from this. Taxes and <laughs> taxes, of course, but we cannot escape. So there's obviously pays you in taxes, mm -hmm. um, and that would come out of your ta uh, your pay packet and also national insurance as well. Mm -hmm. The other big thing I wanted to mention, really, we'll briefly touch on is yeah. pensions. Pensions, yeah. Pensions. So, um, as an NHS employee, you're uh, you're eligible to uh, you're automatically enrolled, in fact, into the NHS pension. That's right. Um, I won't go too into the. Mm -hmm. The specifics of it because that's not the scope of this video but i just wanted to briefly touch on that yes i mean some people can say that's a element of your remuneration obviously once you're of that retirement age you will get a pension mm -hmm. so that's something that you get as a benefit once you, once you pay into it for however many years you work within the nhs and it's widely regarded as one of the best pensions around at the moment so um, i just wanted to briefly mention that so that's based on your pay there would be deductions um, but like I say, you can't get extra for working extra hours. If you go up a band, you do some more seniority, that kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Brilliant, brilliant. I think um, I think that covers most of it, to be honest. You've been really comprehensive in terms yeah. of your explanation. I, I think the NHS tries its best, you know, to sort of level the sort of playing field and make it as objective as possible to sort of understand what your pay, pay packet was yeah, look like. And, and as simplified as possible, because even when I was looking at the, um, yeah. okay, simple might be a strong word, but I mean, that table is pretty good for the agenda, of change, mm. agenda for change. It sort of st stipulates and, you know, then once you go into your annual review meeting, you can sort of raise to your HR people, these sort of, ex especially the experience linked, yes. uh, boost income sort of come with experience as well. So they should sort of, sort of automatically apply once you read that reach that level of fine uh, within that same job load. Brilliant, brilliant. Anything to add? I think that's uh, quite a lot of information we've given today in terms I think of so. uh, pay and you know what what patient what colleagues mm. what potential people that would want to work within NHS. I mean it's it's very uh, subjective in terms of do people feel like they're appropriately paid. It's a pretty political hot topic. Yes. Um, you know, and I don't want to bring that into the, our discussion at the moment, but it's something we must be aware of that, you know, certain people, um, in terms of pay, there are disagreements. Mm. Uh, and I think because it is such a, such a tough topic, mm. people don't tend to bring it up much in this country, I know. Um, sure. But I think we should break barriers with this podcast and, you know, it's something that we definitely, the more information you have, the more informed decision you can make. That's and that's true. something very important that we want to raise within this platform. No, absolutely. And I think you've put it really aptly, actually. <laughs> Thanks, that's good. No, brilliant, brilliant. I think we'll call it a wrap there. Okay. I think we've covered, covered a fair bit of ground. Mm. Um, you know, we've discussed, um, you know, what the process of NHS banding looks like. We've also discussed what was necessary for you to qualify to be part of a particular band, whether that be qualification or experience, um, and also what progression within a band looks like. And what progression between banding looks like um, and um, of course if there's any additional questions or comments that you'd like to make please do make them in the um, in the comments box uh, please do like subscribe 
um, and share this particular video as well as others. But do keep a lookout because we will be sharing a few more videos on the NHS fundamentals and other videos henceforth. So we'll love you and leave you. Take care. See you guys.